Last week, the M3 MacBook Airs arrived in both 13-inch and in 15-inch, but are they new or just some meek rehash? And with a Mac at virtually every price point now, who are they for anyway? Who is the target audience? And now I've had two or three days to spend with my M3 MacBook Air. A little bit later on, I'll give you my first impressions. We'll go through the configs in case you're interested in buying one. And interestingly, we're going to compare the M3 MacBook Air up against a 14-inch M3 MacBook Pro. It's not as silly as it sounds. Now, while we wait for this rumoured and promised OLED 13-inch iPad Pro, and I really want it to arrive, I decided to go with the, the bird in the hand approach. And by that, I mean, these are physical. We actually got the MacBook Airs. So as an impulse last minute buy at the weekend, just before the store shut on Saturday evening, I'm sure they were delighted to see me. I popped up to my local Apple store in Battersea, London, and I bought this, the M3 MacBook Air 15 inch. Now, some people said they preferred that original design. This was never gonna be a major overhaul this year. We know that the MacBook Airs got redesigned a few years ago to this square and more MacBook looking beefier square edge kind of design. So this year is always gonna be some minor changes. And if you did prefer that tapered design of the iconic MacBook Air, for a couple of years at least, you could still buy the M1 MacBook Air. But part of this refresh has been that that's now been retired, it's been taken off the shelves, and the base level entry MacBook Air is now the M2 8-core CPU, 8-core GPU, with eight gigs of unified memory and 256 gigs of storage, which costs 1099, 1,099 pounds, which is good value for money. But just before moving on, can I say 256 gigs of SSD storage in 2024? It is a crime. As much as I love what Apple do, their base machine should start with 512, 256, just doesn't cut it anymore. Now that said, last year, and if you watch my videos, you'll be shouting at me right now, I did buy an M3 iMac with eight gigs of unified memory and 256 of SSD. But that was eyes open. I knew what I was doing. It was just for reviewing on this channel. I wanted to see how performant the base level entry M3 chip was. I knew I wasn't gonna be using it every day and certainly I wasn't gonna be using it for any, anything heavy or put any big files on there. So that wasn't the issue. But I know I did buy it, but as I say, it was with very good reason. But it has struggled from time to time. For instance, once when I was recording my podcast, Minus 16, with my co-host Alex, if you haven't checked out his channel, Alex Gear and Tech, it's well worth taking a look at. It crashed. Now, we use Riverside FM to record the podcast on. I use Edge as the browser. I found that worked well. And for some reason, it just hung and crashed. So that was kind of awkward. Halfway through recording the podcast, we had to reboot and start over again. Not perfect. And the other time, it's kind of good and bad. It's when I was exporting a fairly long 12, 15 minute 4K video, and it kind of glitched out on me. But then again, I had edited a whole video and was exporting a 4K video on an 8K M3 iMac. So it kind of says how good this Apple Silicon really is. But I knew when I was going to buy this MacBook Air, I was going to want it to be more meaningful. I was going to use it on a more day-to-day -day basis. So I was going to change how I spec this MacBook Air up. Just before I tell you about what specs I went for, it's time for me to say thank you once again. You have been brilliant to me. You really have. Last week's video is approaching 10,000 views. It's approaching 150 subs. That's all because of you guys. Thank you so much. If you're fresh to the channel and this is the first of my videos you've seen and you like the way I talk about the gear, honestly, subbing makes a massive difference. You've probably heard it a thousand times, but honestly, for a channel of my size, for a channel of any size, that sub means so, so much. Don't forget, turn on notifications as well because I do put notifications up and make sure to like. That just helps people to share out. It just means YouTube know that these videos are being seen by new faces. It makes a massive difference, but thank you so much. My goal was to get to 5,000 subs before the end of March. And as I'm recording this, I'm 100 away. So fingers crossed I can get to 5,000 subs before the end of March. Thank you ever so, ever so much. Be really kind to me. Anyway, back to the video, back to the MacBook Airs. That's what you came to watch and listen about. Specs, color-wise. Now, last year I went for Midnight Blue, but it never sat very well on my desk, to be honest. Where I work most of the time, I've got a silver MacBook Pro, a silver studio display. So I went for the boring, straightforward silver on this MacBook Air, and it looks really nice in that array, in that lineup there. Now, just before we move away from the colors, there's always a gate, isn't there, with a new device from Apple. There's always some issue. Last year, it was smudge gate. If you remember, they said that fingerprints, it was a fingerprint magnet on Midnight Blue. Well, in my experience, it was bad, but it wasn't terrible. And to be honest, the lid is facing away from you the whole time 
anyway. But any, this year on the, on the press release that Apple released, because of these machines were unreleased on a press release, they said they developed some kind of anodized technique that would protect and make sure that there was less fingerprints on them. So I decided while I was up at Battersea in London the other night, I would test it for you. And as you can see, it still smudges. I couldn't detect an awful lot of difference, to be honest with you. But if you're interested in the Midnight Blue, I would pop up to town or pop into a shop and take a look at it for yourself. But I don't think there's all that much change. Size. I went for the 15 inch this year. Last year I had the 13 inch, this year I went for the 15 inch. I wasn't going to go for the large one until I got in store and I was just drawn to it. And I've only had a couple of days of using it, but I am delighted that I went for this larger size. As I say, I am gonna use this machine a little bit more than I did with the M2 13 inch MacBook Air. And the keyboard, the screen feels a lot bigger than just two inches larger, but it's the keyboard. It's so much more comfortable to type on. It really is. It's been an absolute joy to work with over these last few days. Now, the spec I went for this year, on, oh, sorry, on this machine was the 16 gigs of unified memory, which meant I've got an eight core CPU, CPU, 10 core GPU, and 512 gigs of SSD storage. Now, before you start jumping up and down saying that a creative can't work with 512 gigs of storage, trust me, this is my backup machine. It's my secondary machine. The main machine that I do all of the video editing on and all of the work for this channel on is on my M1 Max MacBook Pro, which is 32 gigs of unified memory and four terabytes of storage. The 512 suits me fine. And if I feel I'm gonna be working on something bigger when I'm on the fly, I can always hook up my Samsung T7 SSD to it and work off of that. I prefer internal storage. It's quicker, it's neater, but I think 512 is gonna work just fine for me. Now, I've never, the, the machine that I've, bought the here cost me £1,699. I've never been one of those reviewers or one of those channels that takes advantage of Apple's really generous 14-day grace period where you can buy it, review it, and send it back. If you see me talking about a product, I bought it with my own money, and I'm using it. I'm genuinely using it. But the one thing I did take advantage of this time was the trade-in with Apple. And it's the first time I've used it, but it is really simple to use. You really should take a, a look at it. All you have to do is put in the serial number of your Mac, answer a few simple questions about the condition of it, and they fire a price back to you. In my case, for my 2022 M2 MacBook Air, they offered me 675 pounds, which I thought was actually pretty fair. Yes, I could have got a little bit more on eBay, but I was happy enough with that price. That then left me two options. I could either do it online with Apple, they send you the packaging, you return it to them, you wait until they've received it, they agree with your description of the machine, they credit you the money back, or what I did was went up to store and did it with them in store. My MacBook wasn't flattened, so we flattened it together there. I asked them what they did with these machines that you trade in. They're completely recycled. This MacBook Air that I've got, for instance, here is 50% recycled. So they're obviously really serious about the environment, as we know. And they even gave me the charger back. I took the original charger with that M2 MacBook Air, but they said, no, no, you can keep that again, all to do with the environment. So I've got a spare charger at home as well. Then I spent Sunday evening setting up and I swear every Mac that I get to set up gets easier and easier. This was a damn sight easier than the iMac somehow back in November. I don't know how or why we might moan or there may be people that moan about Apple's ecosystem, but when you're setting a new Mac up, it makes things so easy. Then I went about putting my essential apps in there, which if you're interested for me, a Dropbox with SmartSync. If you don't use SmartSync, you should, it's genius. The Adobe Suite, I use a lot of their apps. Of course, I use Premiere Pro for these videos, Adobe Audition for the podcast, Lightroom and Photoshop for the thumbnails, and InDesign as well. I loaded all of those up. I've got Audio Hijack on here, and also Ulysses, which is the program I use to write my blogs with every day. If you're interested in reading about my Apple blogs, they're over on Medium, you'll find them there. But with all of my essential apps on, I've only used 100 gigs of storage. So I am pretty happy with my choice of 512 gigs of storage on here. I think it's gonna be more than enough. When it comes to the battery life, clearly it's too early for me to give you an honest appraisal of it. All I can tell you is this. I spent the two hours Sunday night setting up and about three or four hours, maybe even longer working on it on Monday, writing and doing general admin work. And all of that was on the original charger that it came out of the box with. So I think it's fair to say that the battery, the legendary battery life of Apple Silicon is gonna be just as good on this as it always has been. Now, I mentioned early on that we always get a gate with a new device from Apple, and this year it's display gate or lid gate. Let me explain. In the press release that Apple sent out for these MacBook Airs, they said that the M3 now supports two external displays, which is kind of true, but you have to have the lid down. But I don't see that's a big issue. I don't know if that's just me, 
These aren't designed necessarily beyond a desk in a multi-screen environment. They've got their own USP. They're portable. They're lightweight. You can go anywhere with them. I just think it's one of those things that people decided to moan about. That M2 MacBook Air I had, I used it once with an external display in two years. It's just not what they're designed for. So I think this display gate will burn out very quickly. It's not an issue as far as I can see. And anyway, if you did want to use a two displays, it means the lid would be shut. You'd have to have another keyboard and mouse around anyway. Makes no sense to me. The camera is still the same camera, the 1080p FaceTime camera. But what has improved this year is the voice clarity on the mics, which actually sounds pretty good. So I'm on the M3 MacBook Air in QuickTime, and I'm going to make you a couple of quick recordings just so you get an idea of the kind of quality that you would get. First of all, this is with voice isolation turned off. I'm in my studio, which is reasonably well sound treated, of course, and decent lighting. But I think as long as, well, it give you an idea of what these mics are like to use. There's a three mic array in here, and it's the 1080p FaceTime camera. Everything is standard, and I won't alter the color at all in editing either. So what's recording here is what you'll see, and more importantly, what you'll hear. And now I'm going to go and turn on voice isolation to hear if there's any difference at all. But so far, what I've listened and watched back, these cameras and mics don't sound too bad at all. So all I've done is gone into the mic settings, the mic modes, and turned voice isolation on. I haven't uh, had a chance to watch these back to back yet, but when I had a quick look at the first video, I was actually pretty impressed with what that sounded and looked like. The problems that we used to have with compression on these cameras looks like it's gone. They're not overly orange now. They're not overly compressed. They look kind of decent. And obviously, I come from using a lot of proper cameras. But, and don't forget, of course, you can, via continuity camera, you could use your iPhone as well and get an even better picture quality using that camera. But this is straight out of the box. And as I mentioned, I won't do any color editing, color grading in post. What you see is what will be recorded straight out of QuickTime. So be interesting when we do play it back, to hear there's a difference between voice isolation or no voice isolation. But at least it's part of the new M3 MacBook Airs now. I've started to listen to some music on it now, and the rules of physics still apply. It sounds better than the 13-inch MacBook Air simply because there's more space, there's more air, you get better sound. The bass is meaningful, there's decent mids, nice and present so you can hear voices really clearly, there's nothing too shrill about it. If you're just listening to general content during the day while you're working, honestly the speakers on here will suit you perfectly. You can save yourself space on desk and more importantly money, these speakers will be absolutely fine. So then it's a case of who is it for? Who is this aimed at? Well if you've got an M1 MacBook Air, then I think the switch up to M3 is probably going to, well, even you've got an Intel MacBook Air or M1, I think the switch up to M3 would be meaningful. You'll notice a big improvement in speed and the Apple Silicon is even more performant and with a longer battery life as well. And of course you can game on here and all sorts. So it's meaningful enough. Then it's down to the size, 13 or 15. Having used both, I am really happy with a 15 inch for my lifestyle, my workflow and the kind of work I do. Now, you need to make that decision up for yourself. All I would say is jumping up to the 15 inch feels far more like a laptop than a notebook. So for me, most of the time I'm working in the studio at home or here in this studio, and that's just a simple short car drive away for me. I don't need for it to be ultra portable, but if you're working on the fly a lot, working in coffee shops, planes, trains, you might decide that portability is important. So I'd implore you go and check it out in the store before ordering. I am delighted with the extra space on this 15 inch. The keyboard, as I say, alone is a revelation. It's so much more comfortable to work on, but do go and check it out for yourself. Now, I said we we're going to compare the M3 MacBook Air up against a 14 inch M3 MacBook Pro. There's some interesting choices to be made here. For exactly the same money, £1,699, you could buy that base level 14 inch M3 MacBook Pro. And on the face of it, you'd say it's a Pro. Of course you want to get it. You get a liquid retina, mini LED display, you get an HDMI port, you get an SD card slot if you need that. It's a great machine. But the thing is, the kicker is for all that money, you only get eight gigs of RAM and it's a pro. So if you're buying a pro, presumably you're gonna be doing heavier lifting on it. You're gonna be doing harder work on it. And eight gigs of RAM ain't gonna get you very far. I can tell you that from experience. So, from, and you get the same I.O., you get exactly the same I.O., just two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports on both machines. I think it's a no-brainer. Go for the extra RAM. If you need more I.O., buy yourself a dongle. Simple solution. But the extra RAM is going to go a lot further. Okay, you haven't got the mini LED display, but this display on the MacBook Air is still really, really good and more than good enough to work on and edit on. Honestly, for my money, I know you're not getting the name MacBook Pro, but you're getting a better machine that you'll use more and more.
So far, I've been really impressed with this MacBook Air, the extra speed, but more importantly for me, the size of the 15 inch. But I'd be interested to know if you're interested in buying a MacBook Air, would you go now for the MacBook Air or for the 14 inch M3 base level MacBook Pro? Let me know. And if you are getting a MacBook Air, 13 or 15 and colors, do you like that midnight blue? Or will you be a bit more boring like me and just go with the silver? Thank you so much for hanging out with me on this, my first take on the M3 MacBook Airs. I'll be back next week. So don't forget, if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, that subscription really does help me. So I'll be back next week, who knows, possibly, possibly with a video on a 13 inch OLED iPad Pro. Your guess is as good as mine. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.